Hello everyone, Kelly Atchison at estampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I am super excited today because I'm showing you one of the bundles that is in the new holiday mini catalog that went live as of this morning. We're going to be making a little set of cards and this little pouch with the spooky cat bundle. And this, this cat punch, I know that glares in the light and I apologize for that. This cat punch is so fun. And then you've got this matching stamp set that you can stamp and cut out the cat with. But you've got so many more possibilities here for Halloween. It's just a super cute bundle. And we've also got this Spooky Night Designer Series paper. And the really cool thing about this is these cats that are on this designer paper, they perfectly match up with the punch. So you can punch them out also. So that's kind of fun. Beautiful, beautiful Halloween paper. Absolutely love it. And as Stampin' Up! almost always does, one side of the paper has Halloween on it. The other side is neutral. Even though it's oranges and blacks, you can do just about anything with it. Here's another perfect example. Here's all these little bottles of potions. And then you've got these images. So I love this. This is called Spooky Night Designer Series Paper. And you will find this in the holiday mini catalog in the back by the stamp set and the cat punch. I wanted to show you today that um, sometimes people feel like, well, I've got enough Halloween sets. But you can really do other stuff with these bundles. And that's what I wanted to show you today is this cat punch is not just about Halloween. So I've got some great note cards to share with you. This is a pack of our note cards and envelopes. And a lot of people don't even know we have these. These note cards are already scored for you. You fold them in half. They come with matching size envelopes for perfect little note cards. And you can mail these in the mail. They don't require any additional postage. This pack comes with 20 cards and envelopes in it for $6. So that's a really good deal. I really like the size of these for covering the front of them with designer series paper. I feel like I get a lot of use out of my designer series paper for that. So let me show you the cute little cards in this pouch. Here's a card that matches the front. And then we've got this one and this one and this one. And then here's all the envelopes. So I took my cat and I used it on this floral paper. Whole lot of lovely. I'll show this to you in a little bit when I make the card pouch. But aren't these just sweet? It's just a whole set of thank you cards. Let me show you how I made them. The first thing I did was I took my note card and I folded in half and burnished that edge. And I'm just gonna set my envelope aside for a moment. This is five by three and a half. So I cut a piece of cardstock that is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then the whole lot of lovely designer series paper that is just an eighth of an inch smaller. I'm just going to glue this right on the front. There we go. And then add it to my note card. I put that black layer in there because it really makes this paper pop and the little dots in the center appear to be black. I think they're actually soft suede, but black will work for this. Then I'm gonna take some Baker's Twine. Baker's Twine is my go-to when I need some little tiny embellishment. And I'm just going to, oops, I'm gonna hang on to this. Make sure you leave enough to tie a bow. I'm just gonna hang on to this and wrap it all around here. If I get done fighting with it, <laughs> I'm just gonna wrap this around three times. And I'm 
I'm going to straighten this out now so that it doesn't look like such a mess. I didn't, didn't intend for it to look like that. Baker's twine is really easy to do that with. There we go. You notice when I do that, this curling part, it also takes the little kinks out of the baker's twine. These are still on carts. Our new baker's twine comes on a roll, so you don't you don't get those little kinks in it. All right, here we go. I've got our cat punch. I had somebody tell me, I, I've heard from one of my customers when I told them about this cat punch, they said, oh, I'm not really a cat person. And I thought, well, guess what? I'm not really a cat person either, but sometimes the cards that I make aren't about me, they're about the person that I'm giving them to. And I have a lot of people that love their kitty cats. We have two of them, so don't send me any hate mail. They're just, I would prefer dogs. Our cats are cool. Well, one of them is. The other one I don't really care for. She's just, she's not a very nice cat. She doesn't like to be pet. She doesn't like to be held. She's rather standoffish. She's just got a real attitude and she just doesn't impress me. How about that? And I, and I always think if you're going to live in my house, you're going to um, be nice. And she's not. But she still gets to live here because as a pet owner, when you get a pet, you're with your pet for their entire life, right? And we, we treat her good, but she's just not my favorite. Our other cat, um, her name is Snooky, and um, she's named after the gal from, what was that called? Jersey Shore. And my daughter named her. Oh, by the way, classic label punch. I stamped on pool party eight, um, cardstock. And our other cat is Kyle, and Kyle is very cool. He's just a really neat, friendly, loving cat. He lays around the house like a lion. Um, he's just really a nice cat, so I do like him. And that's coming from somebody who's not a cat lady. Isn't that just the sweetest? It is so simple. And, not and then you can see the rest of the cards that I made. Here I use soft suede with crushed curry here. Crushed Curry and Whisper White, and then Pool Party with Tangerine Tango. So just a cute little set of cards with the cat punch and this little pouch. And now I'm going to show you how to make the matching box, which, by the way, for purposes of this video, you might get confused a little bit later because I said that I didn't know how I was going to decorate the front of my box. Well, you can see here that I do know but I made this video backwards. I videotaped the box and making that first and decided what to do with it, and then I came and showed you the cards. So, through the magic of TV, I don't want to confuse you. Let's get on with this little, I'm gonna call it a card pouch. I'm gonna bring my paper trimmer in here, and we're gonna start by making this box. And I've got the whole lot of lovely designer series paper. This is shown on page 188 in the big catalog. I think I've shown this to you guys before. Don't forget that on the back of the package, it tells you what the coordinating colors are that you can use with this. Well, you can use anything you want, but the colors that are in the paper, we've got Pool Party and Crushed Curry and Soft Suede and Emerald Envy. Here's some Peach in here, Tangerine Tango. There's more crushed curry. So it makes it really easy when you're creating to look at the back of your package and know which colors are going to coordinate really well with this paper. I have got a piece of the whole lot of lovely designer series paper here. This is seven and a half by 12 inches. And we're going to put it in our paper cutter. And this is the long side. So if you go to my blog at www.astampabove.com, I list out all these dimensions for you so you can just go there and look at them and find them in one place. When I list the dimensions on scoring, I always say the long side or the short side. So that's what I mean there. We're going to put this in on the long side and we're going to score it at five and five eighths and turn it around and score it at five and five eighths again. And that's it for that side. Super simple, right? I love simple. 
Then we're going to put it in on the short side and we're going to score it at one and seven eighths. And turn it around and score it at one and seven eighths again. Are you guys still with me? This is just seems too simple. Now I'm going to grab my bone folder here. We are going to fold. And now this is the time if you've done your score lines are just a tiny bit crooked, you can force your paper into position so that it's perfectly straight. And I, I do that a lot. I don't know what my deal is, but I tend to have to manipulate my paper a little bit when I'm doing the burnishing. Isn't this pretty? I just love these, these colors and these patterns. All right, now what I'm gonna do is while you've got your paper folded here, you're going to put your finger right down on the edge of your score line so you can pull it right back to the side here. Let me see if I can pick that up. Do you see what I mean? So I put my finger right on this edge and I'm gonna Here's my score line. I'm going to just take it and push it over to the edge and get that lined up with the edge perfectly and then come in here and press that part down. And you can burnish that with your bone folder too. I'm going to do this other side over here. And again, my finger's right on the score line and I'm going to pull that back and line it up with that edge. I'm gonna to have to push it over here a little bit because it's wanting to fold where I don't want it to. There we go. And again, burnish it. So if I can get this in the camera just right, this is what it looks like. We're making that little pouch on the bottom for your note cards to fit in. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Finger held on the score line and just pull it over to meet up with the edge just like that. Push it down in here. And same thing on this side. Boy, putting a box together doesn't get a lot easier than this. We didn't even have to cut any you know, notches out of tabs and so on and so forth. All right, this is your little pouch. Isn't that cool? Now the next thing we need a top for this I'm gonna bring my paper trimmer back in. I've got a piece that's three and three quarters by four and three quarters. And we're gonna score it at one inch on the long side and turn it around and do one inch on the long side again. Fold that over and burnish. There we go. So this is gonna be our lid. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring in my liquid glue and our top gets tucked right in between our designer paper here. Oh, mine seems to be, nope, maybe it fits. I was gonna say it seems to be a little tight. Yep, I think I'm gonna trim just a little smidge off the edge, hang tight. Let's see if this fits a little better. Tuck that right in here, and it does. It's nice and snug, but it fits good. And once you have your box finished, it's gonna close just like this. Isn't that cute? Okay, we are going to add some glue. I'm putting glue on the back of this. There we go. And I'm gonna put this in Side. And I want to fold this over and make sure that I've got this pulled up far enough that it's going to fold over nicely, okay? And you want to make sure it's nice and even here. So I've glued that in, and now I'm going to start gluing down my panels. And when you add your glue here, you're going to go around the outside edge and then just do that angle or diagonal part right there. Now I've seen these little pouches or boxes made with magnets and I decided that I was going to use Velcro this time because my magnets are a little thicker and they didn't lay nice in here. 
So that's just going to work better for me. But you could you could put magnets inside here to close your little pouch or box. What are we going to call this, you guys? I guess I'm going to call, I'm going to call it a card pouch. How about that? Because it really is kind of a pouch. Isn't that just the sweetest? Okay. And so far so good here. This little, little part gets folded right over here and I'm just going to add some liquid glue to fold that down. It's just kind of a little reinforcement tab that gives you a nice folded edge. And then I've got this pack of Velcro that I've had forever and I'm going to use that. I'm just going to stick one right in the middle here and then grab the other half to it, the pickly. Where's the pickly part? Oh, ha! the pickly one, you know, the one that's pickly. <laughs> and now I'm going to put that right on here because I want it to line up nicely and that's just the easiest way to do it. There we go. Hold that down for a minute. These are self-adhesive. If you don't have self-adhesive, you can add some of your own glue to them, I think. And there's our cute little pouch. And here comes all of our envelopes and our four little note cards made with the cat punch. And you're gonna put those right inside your little pouch. Close up right like that. Let me make sure this is straight here. And then I wanted to decorate this, right? Because it's stinking adorable, but it needs a little bit more. So I decided to bring in my cat punch, and I'm going to punch out a cat here. And I've got my Whisper White ink pad, and I'm using the little face from the Spooky Cat stamp set. This is all a bundle. And I'm just going to stamp the cat's face right there. Isn't that cute? And I'm going to, I'm going to pop my cat up on some dimensionals here. I got my nails done for you guys today. Aren't they pretty? I just love this plum color. And believe me, there would be no video happening if I hadn't gotten my nails done because they were hideous. All right, where should we put our cat? Let's put our cat right here. And then to kind of go along with my whole theme, I think I am going to take a little bit of my baker's twine and... Put a cute bow right on the top here. And when you're tying a bow like this that you don't have to untie to get into something, I always like to tie it in a knot because then it's easier for me to deal with when I'm trying to tie the bow part. So I've got that tied in a knot and now I can easily tie my bow if I can get my fingers to work properly. <laughs> Don't forget the little trick about curling the ends of your baker's twine. I actually ran into some baker's twine that wasn't stamping up. I didn't own it, <laughs> but it wouldn't curl like this. So I think our baker's twine is just a nicer quality that allows you to do these fancy little things like this. There we go. Okay, are we ready? There we go. Isn't that cute? You could even put like a little something up here. You could stamp something here. You could put a little oval there. That would be really cute. But what an easy little gift pack to make and give to somebody. And I just, I think this is just adorable. And it was so simple, right? 
Remember, the holiday mini catalog is live as of today, and that is super exciting news. I am thrilled to death. There's a, just a gazillion things in there that I love. I can't wait to show more to you, but this little cat um, is just one of the items that I have fallen in love with. I think there's a lot of possibilities here. So pop me an email if you need that catalog. I'd be happy to send one to you. My email address is kelly at estampabove.com. Make sure you visit my blog where I'll have all the dimensions and photos of everything that I've shown you here today. So it makes it a lot easier for you to recreate. All right, you guys, I hope you have a fabulous Labor Day weekend. And if you're staying home, I hope you get to stamp. I am home this weekend and I've got some home projects that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish up painting um, behind my TV in the living room because it's mounted on the wall and I didn't get to do that. I needed help doing that. And maybe move my new couch into the living room because I've needed that for like years. So I'm pretty excited about that. And on Sunday, it's supposed to warm up enough here in Wisconsin that I'm hoping I can spend a little time by the pool. Enjoy yourselves. Take some time for yourselves. Do something that you love. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.